Forms Season 2 of Dynamo's uh, How To Video Series. Uh, this video is going to be for removing uh, the head. This is the first step that you're going to want to do when installing the BBKs. Some of you other, uh, your, you know, your gear heads, this is going to be very familiar to you. This video is going to be engineered for uh, those users that have the BWS or the Zuma 125 and would like a little bit more power out of it but maybe don't have the technical know-how uh, like I did coming into this thing. I kind of learned by just reading the manual and um, taking advice uh, that I got from Zuma forums. So um, this is going to be step by step out of the Yamaha service book that you can uh, down, download off of my Weebly uh, web page that you can see the address here. Uh, and also you can find it on Zuma forums as well. In order to get this far you would have had to have completed all of the steps listed on page 5-1 through page 5-5 of the Yamaha uh, Zuma BWS uh, service book. If you have downloaded the service book you can feel free to follow along with me. We're going to go o over each step as we go along. Make sure we don't miss any. Okay, on page 5-5 we're going to remove the breather and the O-ring. Let's do this right here. Using the 8 millimeter wrench and I have not messed with this yet, so a lot of these are going to be kind of tight. I'm going to go ahead and remove this right here. And there may be a little bit of oil that comes out of there, so you want to have some rags handy. Go ahead and catch that oil. Huge mess. Okay. And not too bad because I've had this one draining for a little while. Number six and number seven are removing the intake and exhaust head covers. Not absolutely essential for the removal, but this is what the manual calls for, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Project if you find yourself needing to uh, repair, and there was probably about two teaspoons of, uh, of oil in there, so just uh, heads up, make sure you have a rag handy to please that up. Into the magnetic tray. Now we've completed steps six and seven, let's move on to step eight. Okay, we're on the other side now. Uh, step 8 calls for removing the air shroud cylinder 2. Uh, as you'll notice to the right in the remarks box, it says uh, refer to removing the cylinder head and installing the cylinder head. Uh, that means that there is uh, a part of the manual that covers that procedure in greater detail on the next couple of pages. For greater detail and clarity, refer to those pages for any uh, additional specs that are not clear in the present page. Okay, this is where having uh, a power drill, cordless drill, uh, will come in handy. You want to use a large Phillips head. Again, uh, be careful because these are, you know, relatively in there. They're stiff, and the, the metal that they use is it's relatively soft and prone to stripping. So take your time on each of these. You might have to use a pair of vice grips if you do strip the head in order to turn it. So let's go ahead and start removing the air shroud.
Okay. Air shrouds one and two have been removed. We are now on page five dash six. Uh, order number ten. Okay, we're back onto the left side of the motor now to remove the timing chain tension center um, using the 10 millimeter to loosen the top. You don't need to remove that part, just you want to loosen it up a little bit. Okay. And using a 5 millimeter to crack that. I have no idea what's inside this motor. This is the first time uh, I'm opening it up. Uh, based on the look of the CVT, it was not taken care of. I found a broken roller in there, but the belt was still good and a lot of the other rollers were flat. But uh, the belt fan cover was completely filthy, so the sink had not been taken care of. But we shall see. Okay, so here comes the tensioner. Before removing the head, or the timing chain sprocket or the timing chain itself is go ahead and put the piston at top dead center which is the most forward position for the piston. How you can do that is checking two places. The first position is going to be located on the flywheel as shown on page 5-7 uh, you'll see a T and F mark. What you want to do is go ahead and find those marks by turning it here, they're now located right here. I'll try to zoom in some. You can see them uh, right there. Okay? The actual indicator is molded into the case. It's actually, I would say, at uh, about 10 o'clock position. I'm going to go ahead and center that right on that arrow. And there you go. Okay? And that is confirmed by aligning the arrow that is on the timing chain sprocket to the arrow that is on the head. You can find all this information on 5 7 in the picture. Okay? Once the piston is at top dead center, you can go ahead and remove the bolt that's holding the timing sprocket uh, the backing plate for that okay using the 12 millimeter bolt I went ahead and loosened it because it was actually quite tight and I needed uh, some assistance on that if you have an impact it'll come off a lot easier okay so here it goes oh where's my dish and then that's right here. Okay. And then remove the sprocket, which takes a little bit of work. Now, you don't want to drop that timing chain. I said this does take a little bit of finale. And there we go, we're free. Okay. Located on the very top is a little notch. You see it right there? That has to match up with the arrow that's right here. And that's how you know you have the position of top dead center. It matches here and then also on the flywheel or the AC magneto. Okay? That is imperative during the reassembly which I'll cover in a greater um, detail later on. Okay, so you see I, I didn't let go of the timing chain. What I have here is a piece of wire. Go ahead and insert it through the chain. Okay. That's on there good. Okay. On 5-8, at the very bottom there, it illustrates uh, how to remove the cylinder head and the proper sequence for removing the bolts. Okay. Somebody in a white lab coat said that this is a good way to do this. Make sure you don't warp the head. Okay. And for tightening it, it is also the same procedure.
Okay. And this may or may not require a couple wax. It doesn't, but I'm just illustrating in case it does. A couple wax with your uh, your rubber mallet. Or it's like my landlord likes to save the gummy. This comes straight off of there. Okay, so the next step for your 155 install is going to be to remove the cylinder. Keeping in mind, that the metal gasket is installed, as you see here, in between the head and the top of the cylinder. Okay, This, you definitely want to get a new one. Do not try to reuse this at all. Especially for what they cost. If you reassemble it with a used gasket and you find yourself leaking, you're going to have to tear it apart again, costing a lot of extra man hours. The timing tent the timing chain tensor also has a gasket. And again, for what it costs, just go ahead and replace it. Okay. Using your rubber mallet, you will probably have to hit this one once or twice to crack it all the way around, especially because there's a paper gasket at the end of that one. Let's go ahead and start wiggling it free, and eventually it will come up. Let's go ahead and bring it back to top dead center before we go ahead and push that apart. There we go. Okay. Now I'll help with that. And require some wiggling because it is really tight, especially in here for obvious reasons. And here we are. And it's a boy. Here's a cylinder. And here's a piston. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where your 155 kit begins. Until next time, thanks for watching and appreciate the feedback. Thanks.